Hi, Chalk Squad, it's Dylan. From the grave, it's Andrew. <laughs> from the grave i That's died so dark. okay <laughs> all right well you know what's not dark uh the episode you're about to listen to or maybe it is because here's the deal um the episode you're about to listen to was originally a uh, bonus episode of the show that was behind a paywall and as part of such it was not edited or censored or really anything <laughs> so i've gone ahead and marked it explicit for the public publishing it might not be but i figure we better cover our bases and uh yeah this, this, i'm not not gonna go through and re-listen to all of these to verify so just have fun with unedited off the cup probably drinking alcohol dylan yes. and andrew yeah. um because yeah it was a joy to make i hope it's a joy to listen to yeah <laughs> so anyways enjoy this guys Hello and welcome to Candid Commentaries, the uh, bonus show in which Andrew and I discuss stuff that isn't like a normal episode. Uh, we got an especially weird one coming at you today. What, what, what are we doing, Andrew? Oh, Dylan, it is the long-awaited, much-anticipated Royal Rumble of Adventures and Odyssey that we've all spent our entire split episode summer waiting for. That's right. Weighing in at a hundred and uh, I'm gonna say eighty-five pounds, Dylan. Is that is that too much or is that too little? I think one eighty-five is right about right. Okay. Cool, now cool, now cool. I feel like we've no, they know too much, but you know what? You're paying for this content, probably. You are paying for it. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I will say that I'm like roughly like one seventy. So okay, you know, okay. keep that in the corner. Anyway, weighing in at one eighty-five, we've got Dylan's list for split episode summer, and weighing in at uh, one seventy. We have Andrew's list for split episode summer, but you, the privileged listener, will have to stick out the fight to see uh, who outwit and outplays and outlasts um, God. Okay. <laughs> no, this is this is this is very good. Um, the uh, so so yeah, you're probably well if you're listening to this uh, when it comes out. Uh, then you uh, thank you for paying us. If you're listening to this later, um, it's because I think we're going to release this one at Thanksgiving. Um, so you're, you're welcome. This is a taste of what you get behind the wall, except it's nothing like the other stuff on this side of the wall because we've never done this before. Um, but the, uh, the rough format here is we're going to play the promo episode. Um, then Andrew and I are going to... Uh, have a brief competition in which we decide, discuss which one of us ranked which one of the two episodes in the promo, higher or lower. And then once we've made it through all the promos, we'll uh, we'll go through our full ranking, starting at the bottom, working our way up. And uh, yeah, that'll be hopefully exciting to hear. I'm so excited. Oh my goodness. All Every right. ounce of my childhood dreams to be on Sports Center is about to come true in this, uh, mm. this candid commentary. Mm. Yeah, yeah. This is really no pressure. This is this is really the Super Bowl of the Wad Fam Chalkpod. <laughs> it's definitely the closest thing, or or the playoffs. I I don't know, but uh, yeah, but yeah. it could be like a March Madness situation. <laughs> I sure why not, man? <laughs> I. Whatever. Well, my rankings keep keep changing in my head the more I think about this. But uh, but we'll save that for later, folks. Because um, first up, we have 428, which is the eternal birthday and Bethany's imaginary friend. On the next Adventures in Odyssey, two episodes in one. First, Liz has a great time on her birthday until she discovers she's stuck in time and her birthday is happening over and over again. Then, in the second half, Bethany has an imaginary friend, and her real friends are getting very upset. How will it all turn out? It's a double dip of fun with a sprinkle of wisdom coming up on the next Adventures in Odyssey. Okay, so I, I forgot to say it ahead of time, but the eternal birthday is Kathy Buchanan. Bethany's imaginary mm. friend is Lissa Halls Johnson. Now, Andrew, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to guess here that you liked the eternal birthday better out of the two of these. Which do you think I preferred? I, <laughs> I think that you preferred uh, eternal, or eternal birthday as well, actually. Okay. Bethany's imaginary friend. 
Well, you would be I, correct, Andrew. A- oh! Am I am I also correct? <laughs> no, I am so sorry, Dylan. You have uh, you have failed on your your zero for one on your guesses. Interesting. Um, okay, okay. I'm, but I'm, I'm jotting this down. This will this will help me <laughs> in in my future predictions. Is that Andrew preferred the imaginary eternal friend birthday. to eternal over birthday. birthday? Okay, okay. I'm I'm making note of that. I will say, um, just the uh, the bit of what, wait, what was it? Two scoops of fun with a sprinkle of knowledge. I think is. Uh, like odyssey's desired tagline oh <laughs> okay yeah 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 <laughs> two scoops of fun, fun little... the sprinkle of knowledge sure or i think it's wisdom sure. i think is is what they say at the provo okay <laughs> oh man all right <sighs> what's the uh what's the next out dylan okay next episode uh we've got where there's smoke written by jim ware um Oof. this is 441 uh, and that goes up against The Virtual Kid, written by John Fornoff. On the next Adventures wow, in Odyssey, some... Nathaniel gets pestered, picked on, and pushed around until an older boy <laughs> named Nick comes to the rescue. But Nick has a secret and may not be the hero Nathaniel thinks he is. Plus, Alex hits the 6 o'clock news when people discover his awesome website about wit's end. But the reporter's questions cause Alex to wake up and smell the ice cream on the next Adventures in Odyssey. I love the jazz. Yeah, that felt like right? it was far too good. We to had be a in the full background. brass section. We had some yeah, that... squealing guitar. Oh. oh yeah, no, it was. I mean, that was like some impressive. Like it started off almost like bluesy, like mm-hmm. Americana ish, and then it kind of shifted into big band, and I completely ignored everything else that was being said. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So, uh, where there's smoke or the virtual kid, I, I think you like the virtual kid more. I think think you prefer where there's smoke. Shocker, Dylan, you would be correct. Hey, and you know what, Andrew? I also prefer where there's smoke. Good episode. It's a good episode. So look at that. We, 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 we're agreeing on one. I'm, I'm proud of us. I... (laughs) I I really didn't think about that at all about um like what are, the differences of our list how that would uh relate to like the homogeneity of the podcast meaning wait I sorry I'm not sure I quite track with that what are, what are you saying like oh I'm like like it reflects your taste in Odyssey and that is like maybe different like more so different than mine than i had previously anticipated oh interesting yeah yeah i'm learning a bit more about you right well and we have the thing where it's like we tend to wind up in kind of a consensus place when we're talking about these episodes like you know in real time Mm -hmm. but now now we've got uh we've got the potential to to disagree some because we're not we're not doing it all together and isn't that fun no more mr nice split episodes <laughs> oh man all right um up next we have um 443 the a side of which is the treasure room written by kathy buchanan and the b side of which is chain reaction written by marshall younger at wow, Wits so End, there's a door with a sign words. that says Private <laughs> Keep Out. It's the door to Wits Private Treasure Room. Keep out. But on the next Adventures in Odyssey, Aubrey and Lisa are overcome with curiosity and sneak in to find out what's inside. Plus, how can Wits a inside. an alarm clock and a bicycle mm-hmm. keep Odyssey from getting that new water slide? Get all the details on the next Adventures in Odyssey. The answer, Harlow Door. <laughs> <laughs> the answer may be Harlow. <laughs> If you or your loved one has been hurt by Harlow Doyle, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Mm, I have not been hurt by Harlow Doyle. I I love Harlow. That's and, what I'm saying. And Harley, you know, I'm I'm fine with a good goofy go- uh a good goofy gop trope, you know. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. We 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 love we love when when the grand old party is goofy. <laughs> 
like racist. I don't know. It's not <laughs> racist to my understanding. Yeah, Luffy... yeah. Sorry if that's if that's if that's offensive to someone somewhere. I am so sorry. Yeah, I do feel like that could be the equivalent of like the c word in some other nation. Oh no, no. What if I what if I just bleep it for no reason? I think that that's it. Yeah, I think that that's in the these answer. highly up ha- highly edited episodes. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna bleep <laughs> that one. Okay, Andrew. Mm-hmm. Between the treasure room and chain reaction, I think you prefer chain reaction. Yeah. Oh yeah. You would be absolutely correct. And I would presume the same thing about you, obviously. Right? Harlow? Maybe? Nope. Treasure room wow. all the way, baby. Wow. Oh, this is this is good. I, I love okay. I love I love when, when mom and dad argue. Yeah, me too, really. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm so curious because where I have treasure room on my rankings, I feel like might be offensive. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, maybe mine will be offensive to you. That's fair. <laughs> or maybe it'll just, you know, they'll both be towards the middle. Who's to yeah. say? <laughs> uh, the listener when oh, they man. find out it's next. It's going to be so this is going to be so fun. I'm, I'm having yeah. I'm having a blast, guys. Hopefully, oh. hopefully this is enjoyable for the listener, but eh, if lists. not <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Okay. All right. Up next, we have uh, four. Wait, what did we just do? We did the treasure room. Okay, so we have four thirty-seven, which is Sunset Bowl of Water, written by John Fornoff, oh, and classic. The Long Way Home, written by Jim Ware. Ooh! Wow. Mm-hmm. This is, on the this next is, Adventures in Odyssey, something's wrong. It's Mandy's goldfish. He's been murdered, but who did it? Can Harlow Doyle solve the case, or will the answer come from a surprise witness? Then, Aubrey's odd jobs pay off. She saves enough money to take a bus trip to the Connellsville Fun Park, but the bus and her plans wind up somewhere else, and you can be there with her on the next Adventures in Odyssey. Wow, we thought the last promo was jazzy. No, that's straight jazz. That that was beautiful. That was the Aristocats of, uh, <laughs> of Odyssey intros. Oh man, do you do you think that that is just like that? This is just stock music that they pull. It I feel like it's got to be to a certain extent. Like, is there like, just I like be there's got to be like a library of. 30 second commercial music that they just license right yeah yeah it's got to be and i'm sure like yeah i mean not that there's not artistry in picking out the correct ones um because no, i for sure think the there performance is performance of the actual music oh right itself, right but but yeah that was i feel like it's less likely to be uh specifically curated for the episode and more right right they're not so they're not that writing episode. that every time i can't imagine <laughs> I don't think John Campbell's getting a call and being like, hey, man, we need you on this one. (laughs) We need you to compose 30 seconds of some of the best big man, big band (laughs) music you can think. Uh, You know what? I bet he could do it. It, John John Campbell is is great, but. A man of many talents. Mm -hmm. So, Dylan. Yes, Andrew. We're uh, between The Long Way Home and Sunset Bull of Water. Bowl of water, I should say. Uh, I think you like Sunset Bowl of Water more. I also think you prefer Sunset Bowl of Water. You know, you would be correct. Okay. But this is okay. one of those instances where I'm thinking about my rankings now. And oh. Like, like, well, wow, that was really... that. I mean, I can't necessarily say that I prefer the other one over. Uh-huh, uh-huh, but, but they're closer than what you close. thought? Okay, oh, yeah, okay. Way closer. Wow. See, this is this is this is the brilliance. Is yes, my ranking has also been changing as we go on. Okay, but, okay, okay. But yeah, that's yeah. Uh, no, I've, I would potentially move that up a couple of spots because it's good. <laughs> it's real. Good. I'm also like, what if the what if I home that is? What if I just start tanking so, the ones that I think Andrew has picked in my oh, ranking? Yeah. No, there is just to that. just to give you even more <laughs> of a strong reaction, right? No, no, we're we're gonna More we're gonna anger. stay true. This is this is gonna be this is gonna be my actual ranking, guys. Yeah, I am yeah, exactly. I am giving you 
yes, I am giving you a good, a good ranking it here. <laughs> it was authentically designed to make me irate. Oh yeah, yeah. No, this is yes. <laughs> From from the bottom of my heart, I really hope that this that this ends you. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I would like I would like if this is how I go out, you know, I think I could do a lot worse for myself. <laughs> I think I have done worse for myself on this podcast. <laughs> <sighs> uh, okay. Oh my goodness. All right, next two. Yes. So next up we have the feline duo. <laughs> Yes, that's right. Uh, 438. Uh, part A is The Lion Tale. And Part B is the... Oh, written by Charlie Richards. And Part B is mm. The Telltale Cat, written by Jim Ware. Mm. What if okay. you could point a pen so, at your friends I and find think... out what they really think? On the next Adventures in Odyssey, what helps Liz tune in to people's thoughts? But is that knowledge what she really wants to know? Plus, who's going to give everyone advice at Wits Inn when Wits away? Can a machine take his place or just raise more questions? Learn the answer for yourself on the next Adventures in Odyssey. Okay, Andrew. Which one do I like more? Which one do you think I like more? Uh, the format hasn't changed. No, no, you are correct. I believe you enjoyed The Lion Tale more. Interesting, interesting. I think that you also preferred The Lion Tale. I'm upset. <laughs> Why? I did not like the lion. <laughs> Neither did I. I also preferred Telltale Cat. <laughs> okay, so we okay, actually okay, agree on this good. one. Okay, You're just well, mad that well, I <laughs> that I accused you of of it. Look, the Lion yeah, Tale like have... is an episode that was released, and the Telltale Cat was not, and we disagree that with that upsetting. decision. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. No. Definitely should have swapped those. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my goodness. I didn't realize until checking this that they were the back to back both like intentionally about cats. <laughs> I mean, I don't know that they were intentionally about cats, but they were back to back about cats. Andrew, we've made a grave mistake. What? Those weren't the episodes we played the promo for. No, no, I did realize that. <laughs> I, I heard the promo for Idle Minds, and I I just didn't acknowledge it. Oh wait, no, no, no! It it is the problem is that Lion Tail pairs with Idle Minds on the album oh, because oh. they got rid of both Telltale Cat yep. and What Do You Think? No, no, we just did What Do You Think and Idle Minds for the promo. I don't know. We're all mixed up here. <laughs> chaos uh, let's let's so yeah well no no no. we now need to discuss between what do you think and idle minds which you prefer yes oh okay um hmm. no i think you prefer idle minds for sure um and i think i think you i think you also prefer idle minds you would be correct. Interesting. You're wrong, man. Yeah. Uh huh. Interesting. So, what did you like about what do you think? Because I can't say that I remember a ton about the we'll, SR. We'll we'll talk about that one later. Okay. We, we we gotta we gotta save that for when we're doing like the full the full go through talk about whatnot. Okay. 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 My bad. My bad. I'm getting ahead of myself. You you are Andrew. How dare Notoriously. you? Notoriously. <laughs> I blame the national Adderall sh- shortage. <laughs> I I'm gonna check real quick and make sure I don't have a promo somewhere for uh for the lion tail because I don't know I feel like maybe maybe one should exist and if so I want to give it its due. Have happened. Uh. 
All right, this might be the promo for the Lion the Tail. Adventures in Odyssey, Aubrey takes out the trash <laughs> and gets a free oh. hospital. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad we did this. Tale. Something about a mountain lion. In fact, there's a whole lot of lion going on. Then there's a new cat in the family at Mandy's house. But her brother David is not amused, and he gets rid of it. Has he committed the perfect crime? You oh. be the judge on the next Adventures in Odyssey. Oh, man, I am so glad that we went back for that, folks. <laughs> wow, that is insane. Just the... the <laughs> there's so much finesse and oh, attitude put into it. Man. It's, I mean, it, I wonder if, like, that was an intentional, like, sonic choice for this era of the show to kind of give it the like three ring circus vibe because you you get a little bit of that with the artwork of like in your wildest dreams and stuff sure sure it is so crazy like i don't know i wouldn't be surprised if uh like a very distraught phil lawler was like you know what all this feels like all this change like a three ring circus. We should just <laughs> go with that. You know, you know what's funny that I didn't think about till now? And we kind of knew it because it's like this is the era where they're like testing out a bunch of new writers and whatnot, especially on these split episodes. But Phil Waller doesn't write a single split episode. He directs every one of them, but he doesn't write any. <laughs> make of that whatever you will. Oh, man. I, I make only good things out of that. <laughs> Keep that man away from any sort of writing. Fair enough. Okay. Next up, we have uh, an interesting one. We have Two Roads, written by Jim Ware, mm-hmm. which we covered years ago, and Sticks and years. Stones, written by Marshall Younger. On the next Adventures in Odyssey, two boys make different choices about stealing candy. A decision that takes their lives in different directions. But one day, they meet again, and you'll never guess where. Plus, Bart Rathbone is afraid his store is in for some competition. And as usual, he has a clever plan to make the competition leave town. Sticks and stones may break some bones, but who's? Find out on the next Adventures in Odyssey. What is this musical genre? It's like it's like I, easy listening. Like no, we just became is. like smooth jazz. <laughs> no, yeah, we we have like there there are two moods. We have elevator music. Which oh, is it is like very elevator jazz R and R and B, and then like big band swinging brass, basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, of the two of these, I believe that you would rank two roads higher than Sticks and Stones. Yes, 100%. Not that I don't like Sticks and Stones, like I, like I really hated the episode, but I, yeah, Two Roads was just, I mean, you can't beat Twilight Zone. It's so funny and so weird <laughs> and so different from everything ever. Like, and the fact that they threw a Twilight episode in the middle of split episodes, like, yeah. for that exact purpose, I feel like sure. it's just, they should have done more of it. I'm... <laughs> more upset that there aren't more twilight zone episodes andrew you got to save this for for our deeper our, our, when we're going through and giving the ranks list but i um w- w- which which of the two do you well, think i, I prefer I, oh two roads by, by <laughs> right? yeah of course uh n- number one twilight zone stand right here it's it's still in weaver gotta put it gotta put it in there well and that's why i felt uh, at liberty to discuss it a little deep, more deeply because it's not officially in my rankings because it oh, wasn't, oh, didn't okay. fall during split episode summer. But you're going to include it in your in your rankings when we go through or nah? Oh, I mean, I can. Would I mean, like it's me? it's in, it's in mine. Okay, okay, then I'll put. Because otherwise, mind. otherwise we're gonna get to the top and like because we're starting from the bottom, we're gonna we're hit. <laughs> indeed, we're gonna hit my number two, and it's gonna be your number one. Yeah, no. Exactly. So like, like we do need the same number in same here. Number. Okay, okay, okay. All right, I I, I think I've yeah. got a spot for it. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, up next we have. So this is going to be. So we have career moves, but mm-hmm. career moves does not have a radio promo, um, because it just aired the yes, once, unfortunately. 
So we're skipping career moves, although we can talk about which of these three we prefer, because 444 okay. is, a, is, is A, B, and C. So we can decide okay. on our favorite out of those three. Um, and then we are going to do, uh, so this, so that's career moves is Marshall Younger. We're doing, this promo's got The Bad Guy, also written by Marshall Younger, and Bethany's Flood, mm -hmm. written by Jim Ware. Oh, wow. Okay. Can God turn a bully and a bruiser into a certified saint? On the next Adventures in Odyssey, Nick tries to prove that his old friend Vince's saintly ways are just another con and gets a valuable lesson in forgiveness. Plus, join Bethany as she takes a wild ride on Noah's Ark and discovers that good things happen when we trust and obey on the next Adventures in Odyssey. Andrew, of those three options... Which do you think uh, I prefer? Oh, um, I think you're going to go with career moves. What do you think? Um, oh man, do I think? I'm going to dark horse say you went Bethany's Flood. Wow. You would be incorrect in that. <laughs> um. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I, I did go career moves. What was your preference there, Andrew? Oh, career <clears throat> career moves. All Interesting. So we, we once again both went for the unreleased episode. Yes. Yeah. We went for the unreleased episode and uh, did not guess that the other person did either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fair. Fair. Love that. I, I will say th this harmony. was that that was of the... Uh, of any of the pairings, that was a that was a that was a harder one for me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, oh no, there's a lot of competition in that one. I mean, because Career Moves was a, a, like a solid episode featuring some of our favorite characters, but the bad guy was also like pretty well written. Heavily features Nick, all that funny stuff. More cigarettes, which is always a big you know bonus as far as my statistical <laughs> uh, rankings are concerned. Sure, sure. So you know. There, there was a lot of there was a lot of good competition amongst the boys today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, indeed. Bethany's flood just uh, didn't didn't quite make the cut. Um. Okay, and then our final our final two of of the uh, of the split episodes, we have episode four forty six, which is a matter of manners by John Fornoff, and the seven deadly dwarves by Jim Ware. On the next Adventures in Odyssey, Alex and David are banned from Wit's End, and Wit tells them not to return until they learn some manners. But when the two become etiquette experts, they're even more unpopular. Plus, Bethany dreams of being a princess. She wanders into the rainforest, only to encounter seven deadly dwarfs. Who will rescue her? Find out on the next Adventures in Odyssey. That just felt like normal Odyssey music. Yeah, no. Like that, that, that did was, just uh, feel like oh, this is the promo closed. music. <laughs> <laughs> they're not. They're not actually like swinging big on this one. Nope. Um, nope. <laughs> so Andrew, no, just grab the nearest disc. Um, between I, a matter of manners and seven deadly dwarves, I think you preferred a matter of manners. I believe you preferred seven deadly dwarves. And you would be correct. You, and you would be correct. Wow. <laughs> Love oh that. bad. Agree yep. to disagree, if you will. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. All right. So here is here's what everyone's been waiting for. Mm hmm So we're gonna do the full All rundown. Summer. We're gonna start from the bottom. Nineteen. We're going to work our way up. Additionally, when we announce what we what our bottom ones are, I will also announce what based on the wiki ratings. The lowest oh, yes, split episode please. is. So oh. we can discuss that as we go through. So happy. So happy. I'm mm. Chef's Kiss. Excellent addition, Dylan. All right. All right. Would you care to kick off our so, rankings? Coming in at spot nineteen out of nineteen of the split episode summer roundup. I have the virtual kid. Wow. Oh my gosh. I have the treasure room. <laughs> oh, oh, oh man. man. You guys, oh you're in for such a treat. 
<laughs> oh. oh, okay. All right. So, so, Virtual Kid, you thought was the worst just because, like, I, you didn't think that it really served the goal that it was trying to reach? Or I'm, I'm I, trying to tease that from you. Yeah, I think I think the Virtual Kid <laughs> is is not a great episode, and a lot of that is... The whole... I don't know. The whole, like, thing where Alex is going through and, like, writes this... <laughs> writes this thing for the website is fine. I think that the, the... The thing that really killed the episode for me is that the moral winds up being that... You should run everything by wit before you post it online. And there exactly. were like interesting things they could have done with that premise, and that's where they ended, and it just made me really upset. No, no, rightfully so. I okay, that makes a lot of sense. Andrew, talk to me about know, the I, treasure room. I I just thought it was like it felt the most um straightforward as far as like oh don't go behind that door i wonder if they're gonna go behind that door they went behind that door (laughs) and that's like that's the premise of the episode as far as like what's creating conflict and all of that like it it just didn't particularly interest me and i i thought that it was sweet you know at the end when he's like oh yes you know the real treasure i have is from all these wonderful uh, relationships which good love that Mm-hmm. Didn't make for a great episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, All right. Do we want to keep it for so that I'm always two. revealing first, or we want to go back and forth? I can. I can go next. Okay. So, so coming in at point number eight, or at spot number eighteen, Andrew, what do you have? I have the lion tail. <laughs> <laughs> I Wait, have, do you have the lion tail as well. <laughs> no, I have a matter of manners. Wow. Now, okay, <laughs> them's be fighting words, cause. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. I'll have you know, matter of manners is um in the uh-huh. top fifty percent of my episode. <laughs> great, great. Um, then uh, and the the wiki. Coming in with a 59% and 55 total votes has mm-hmm. Bethany's Flood. Wow. Okay, that makes sense. The wiki the wiki does not like the flood. I I'm I knew that the wiki hated the Bethany episodes. I felt like Bethany's Flood was one of the better ones. <laughs> like it's not the lowest ranked Bethany's epi- Bethany episode that I have. Oh no, I I would I would agree, and we'll we'll get into <laughs> it. Um, I'm surprised we haven't hit one yet. For either <laughs> of us. Um, I uh yeah. So uh, you wanna you wanna defend your your choice a little bit there, Andrew? Yeah. So the lion tail again. It just it felt really. St- straightforward as far as the plot was concerned like the story just keeps getting bigger and bigger and more unreasonable and like i don't know i just found it really hard to empathize with the character in the situation not that i'm not a compulsive liar because i am (laughs) but but because she did such a terrible job of it (laughs) (laughs) andrew's like if i'm gonna lie i'm gonna do a good job Gosh yeah, dang it. exactly. Like, there's there's a way that you can, you know, uh, use hyperbole to make your story more interesting. Yeah. Well, and... That is not... Discredit yeah. it completely. <laughs> and to be fair, the lowest... I mean, it's the lowest rated one from the wiki, so clearly some people agree with you. Yeah. I don't know. I just... I didn't really get that much enjoyment out of it, and, like, the ending reward was just... It felt st- so straightforward that it... And all, it just didn't feel like it needed to be said. Sure, sure. <laughs> what about you? Your your uh, Ma- a matter of the of a matter of manners. Look, I mean, we we I feel like this one we talked about fairly recently. But yeah, we did. It's David. It's a David and Alex thing where like they're not funny. They're just annoying. The episode doesn't do anything interesting, and is just all like it just goes through this whole thing of, like, manners police, and then Wit's like, ha-ha, got you, like, you should have, you know, like, look look at you guys holding people up to unrealistic standards. Actually, you're the dumb ones. I, 
I, I just didn't. I guess both of mine are wit issues. <laughs> I'm no, realizing. That makes sense. And and hearing your explanation makes me want to move it down. <laughs> well, that's too bad, Andrew, because we did lock it in when we started we this. We did lock it in. Oh man. All right. Um. So coming in at my number three or at my number seventeen, I have the eternal birthday. Okay. You know, I'm not surprised uh, that you picked that. I picked sticks and stones. Okay, all right. So, is that one that you really enjoyed? What sticks and or, stones? Yeah. No, oh, no, no. We'll, we'll we'll save my sticks and stones rating for later. But like, um, <laughs> we oh, and the uh, so with uh with a wiki rating of seventy percent and fifty one votes, we have the seven deadly dwarves in seventeenth place. Ah, there she is. You know, I don't I don't hate that ranking in that situation. I think the wiki might be right. <laughs> sure, sure. We got two. I well, and we'll we'll see we'll see how it pans out as we go through. But I it's got the seven deadly dwarves ranked 11% better than Bethany's flood, and that's a strong choice. Um yeah, but. I can't I can't confirm that take. <laughs> that seems a bit drastic. Oh man. Okay, so uh, so Andrew, uh, you you wanna you wanna you wanna talk a little bit about about your uh, your choice there. So, um, sticks and stones, <laughs> is that the one where the Rathbones are trying to get rid of the new guy that moved into town? Yes. Yep. And it's yeah. it's an unreleased. Uh, it's. Yeah, it it doesn't seem like it should be particularly well regarded. It. Yeah, exactly. I. Yeah, I. I think the. It's just uh, bullying Doris the episode. Rathbone. Yeah, exactly. Well, and they're. Yeah, they're bullying two people that have done absolutely nothing to deserve it, which is, like, yeah, it's just annoying and it's exhausting because it's the Rathbones. There's there's parts of it that are humorous, for sure, but. I don't know. Yeah, I I just yeah. didn't enjoy it. I felt like it was overdone and again bullying the episode like it it felt like it drug on at 11 minutes which i don't know how you manage that <laughs> sure no i yeah i agree well and that's similarly my critique of the eternal birthday in which like it's just uh i mean we talked about it but it, it's just it's bad groundhog day it's a fun concept but it's not particularly well executed we just get exactly. the same story done over and over and he, but he doesn't really have fun with that it just kind of makes liz miserable in it and it, it it bums me out and it's right it's like a bad use of a good premise in my in my opinion all right we gotta we gotta we gotta keep moving because we, we can't we can't take forever yep. on this um so coming in at number 16 i have the Seven Deadly Dwarves, which I think is categorically the is. worst Bethany episode. Andrew, what uh, do you I have? I do agree. Uh, at 17, I have the Virtual Kid. At 16. I'm sorry, at 16, yeah. I'm sorry. You have the virtual, 16, have the Virtual Kid! Yeah. Look at that. No. Yep. So you... For you... the same reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Ditto what Bad Dylan wit. said. Ditto what Dylan said. Bad wit episode. Not a, not a fan of the... I just thought that yeah, the lesson at the end was convoluted. I don't yeah. know. No, it's fair. It fair enough. The, um, it doesn't show the internet the respect it deserves, and it also doesn't show the kid the respect it deserves. <laughs> Amen. Um, at at the uh, what is it? At seventy? Oh, it's seventy-two percent uh, with twenty-nine votes. The wiki has uh, Bethany's imaginary friend. Wow. They you don't know, like the Bethany episodes. They really All three of them Bethany. right in a row there at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> Only surplanted that, by the lion tail, which... Does that count yeah. as racism? I Against like... Bethany? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I mean, I don't it's... feel like that's necessarily a racially charged episode, but woof. I don't know. It doesn't feel good to have all of her episodes grouped at the bottom. <laughs> 
Sure, sure. It, it's but it's the it's Odyssey as a team trying to write stuff towards a younger audience, and Odyssey the audience as represented by people who are on the wiki being like, we want our episodes nope. to be more adult, <laughs> so yeah. or less childish. Sense. I understand how they got there. Um, okay. Coming in at slot number 15 for me, we have Sticks and Stones for the okay. same reasons, more or less, than what as what Andrew had, <laughs> which there is just, go. it's not, it's not Good. a fun episode to listen to. The Rathbone family antics are bad, and it mm-hmm. all, like, right, centers around this guy being called fat. Yeah. Like, which why? Which right? And they no longer air it. So yep, yeah. All right. The one what, time what you... I'm agreeing with focus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So for number fifteen, I have ranked Chain Reaction. Oh, is... okay, yeah. okay. Talk talk to me about Chain Reaction, Andrew. Again, so it's a zany you know episode it's it's really slapsticky again i just i i like harlow as a character but just because all the events were so discombobulated i mean it is really just like the rude goldberg machine the episode like isn't that is, is, is yeah did I say no it correctly yeah no you're 100 percent right that is that is yeah, what it okay. is so i don't yep. know and <laughs> I've watched enough Minecraft YouTube videos where they make Rude Goldberg machines. Like, I just, I don't know. It yep. never really enticed me the whole, like, wow, look at this whole chain of events that made this one thing happen. And by the way, <laughs> that thing is taking a water slide away from Odyssey, which seems right. like a crime. Right. Like, we need that. Right. It, that the, the one the one boon I'll give to that episode, it does have uh, Harlow Doyle being confused about how clocks work. So, Which, that's great. Amen. Where he goes <laughs> to bed at 12 and wakes up and it's 12. And he's like, I went to, he's like, it's midnight, I gotta go to bed. And then he wakes up, it's like, it's noon, I'm late. It's great. <laughs> um, Been there. Been there. All right, and the wiki in that, uh, in that spot in 15th has... Uh, with uh, 75% and 36 votes, career moves. Wow. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yep. I got some beef to pick with the wiki on that one. <laughs> uh huh. We've got we throw down. I love it. We've got we've got wiki beef through and through. Um, Since day one. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. In slot 14, I have Idle Minds. Interesting. That is. I don't thing. like robot wit. I don't like robot wit either. I thought that it was like I enjoyed it as a yeah. concept. Yeah. No. No. Okay. Uh, that's that's totally fine. It is an episode that sticks in your head for sure. Yeah. Exactly. Um, okay. So for my 14th slot, I have my first Bethany episode on, <laughs> which is the Seven Deadly Dwarves. Boom. Yeah. Far the worst <laughs> of of the three. Not a fan. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we are gonna, we are about to enter into the Bethany purgatory of my list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fun! Oh man! All right, then. Oh, and the wiki in this spot has, uh, with seventy-seven percent and forty-three votes, the Telltale Cat. Wow, man! Really? Uh huh. Huh. Yep. So, that's... Uh, I don't that... know why. I mean, I guess because it was unreleased, right? Like, I, I feel like that must have influenced the rank, the rating. So yeah, like, maybe. Maybe. Maybe they were like, you know, Focus doesn't like this, then neither do we. Um, yeah. All right. Moving on up in... Oh, gosh. My 13th place pick. Mm-hmm. The Lion Tail. There it is. It had to come I'm up. It was it. so. So the the well, what I was gonna say is, I think I think by consensus, then uh, between you, me, and the wiki, uh, that is our second uh, pick to be eliminated. The first one exactly. that was eliminated <laughs> by all three was Seven Deadly Dwarves, and now we have successfully <laughs> eliminated the Telltale Cat. Or sorry, um, Are you the Lion Tail. I mean, those two episodes have Woo! the same title, so that is the problem. Yep. <laughs> Oh man, but uh, but yeah, what a good not one. a. 
Okay, so then for my 13th slot, I have uh, Bethany's Flood right above Seven Deadly Dwarves. Okay, uh, okay. slightly better, but not by much. Again, I just, I think I appreciated it. I think I appreciated the story more than the story that, that was told in Seven Deadly Dwarves. Like, Noah's Ark compared to the Seven Deadly Sins portrayed as evil Smurfs, presumably. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> all right so then um i'll go oh did, did i say did i sorry 12 spot. no wait i didn't mention mm-hmm. did i mention what the uh no the wiki the wiki has uh idle minds as their number 13 oh so okay the wiki and wow, i are so almost in agreement hates, <laughs> also hates robot wit yep man interesting okay all so right. then for my number 12 spot, I, that's where I slot in the, uh, what is it, Choka Maka Chunk Ice Cream featured <laughs> in Eternal Birthday. Okay. I love it. I, 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 I don't know why I gave that episode so much favor, but in all <laughs> honesty, I do think I like uh, some of these more than it, but... Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I probably enjoy Chain Reaction more than, uh, more than Eternal <laughs> Birthday. <laughs> oh, there you go. Um... I have in my in my number twelve slot with uh, some you know a- additional vitriol here. Uh, we've got Bethany's imaginary friend. Woof. <laughs> yeah, I don't have the connection that Andrew does to this one. I relate way more with Aubrey and being yeah. annoyed by her. I I will say like Bleeb's my man is pretty Bleebs, my guy. like <laughs> p- pretty un- hard to top, but. Uh, but not not oh enough so God. to give this episode a higher rating. Dang, you know, honestly, <laughs> Bleeb's my guy is almost good enough to just make that top the list. <laughs> like I think that might be the best oh. Odyssey. Joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Andrew, what what do you have as as your number 12? So Oh, no, that, my, I did Eternal Birthday, remember? Oh, right, right. Sorry, you already said it. Okay. Then moving on up to our number 11th slot, I have Chain Reaction. There it is. Yep. Okay. I and similarly, I have... like, I, I didn't hate that episode, but it is just meandering and doesn't, it, it, it doesn't pay off in the ways I want it to, um, yeah. although it is kind of a fun ride. No, no, it is kind of a fun ride. I that's that's a very good description of it. Where it's like it's pleasant enough, but it it doesn't really do anything. Um, okay, so yeah, and that for my number eleven spot, I have. What do you think? Which that is the uh, the one with. Um, oh, is it Mandy that learns to read people's minds? Yeah. Uh, it? no, it's Liz. It's Liz. Oh, it's Liz. Liz learns to mean people's, people's minds. minds. And what do you yeah. think? Again, classic trope. You know, oh, man, I wish I knew what they were thinking about me. Just kidding. Everybody's terrible. Uh, <laughs> don't, you don't want to know what they're thinking about you yep. most of the time. Fair enough. Um, but it's good. You know, it's it's a cool Liz moment. Like, there are parts of it that I do like. And obviously, like, the episode centered on kids, I tend to gravitate towards mm-hmm. more than others. So, yeah. yeah, definitely have some affection for it. But it's nowhere near the... Uh, the esteem that follows it. Yeah. Shoot. Did we say, did we say what was in the last slot for, for, uh, the wiki? Um, I don't say it and I'll uh, tell you. <laughs> so in slot 12, so the previous one was two roads. Um, oh, okay. so, cause, cause the wiki doesn't like twilight zone because they're normal, I guess. Um, yeah. So yeah. And now in slot 11, they have the virtual kid. Okay. Oh man. All right. And now 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 for us. So this is this is we're going to go over our slot 10s here. This will yep. be splitting the difference between the top and the bottom. Um mm-hmm. so what is our exact median episode of uh <laughs> of this show? I have in here the long way home. I wow. I okay. like Here's the thing. I like Aubrey. I mm-hmm. think that this episode is all right. I mean, it's it's right. It's 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 my median episode. It's not in my bottom half. It's yeah, it's, no, it's right good. in the middle. 
it just, it didn't quite work for me. I think the moment at the end with Billy is really great, but I didn't like it enough mm. to give it a higher rating. I don't think it left that much of an impression on me. And so that's exactly. my number 10. No, no, I, I do respect that. And for my number 10, I have uh, two roads for that. It pretty much exactly. Oh, wow. Same okay. Reason. Yep. I liked Two Roads. It was good. It, it, not my favorite Twilight Zone episode. You know, no, this, no, this nor era. mine. But it, it's solid, and so I think that it deserves. I think that it deserves a good amount of props for what it does, especially in comparison to the actively bad episodes. <laughs> sure. That we yeah. Exactly. About. Exactly. All right, and uh, in that spot, in spot number ten, in the middle on the wiki, they have the bad guy. Wow, interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which has come up on neither of our lists so far, right? Correct. Correct. It's yeah. still it's still in the game. Um <laughs> okay. So, uh taking away on the um on the top half of my list as number 9, I have what do you think? Okay, so so pretty close to me, just a, like a couple yeah. of spots. I, I ranked it a little bit higher, but it's yeah. right. It's a room of consequence episode. It's the it's the room of consequence episode that works in mm-hmm. the way that the um that the eternal birthday does not. So I okay, I, I rank right. it higher because of it. It's got kind of a two roadsy thing. Like it's it mm-hmm. it's it's lives in like room of consequence lives in that twilight zone zone and. Um, yeah, I, I, I think this one, I think this one's kind of fun. No, I, I agree. I do think that it is fun. And Liz is a great character to kind of explore. And with Room of Consequences, you really get to, you know, get into the heads of the kids and stuff. So, yeah, I, I yep. can see that. All right. Um, <laughs> okay. So, the highest of the high of all Bethany episodes comes in at my number nine slot in Bethany's imaginary friend. Because there you Liz, go. My guy is <laughs> so funny. And because you, you relate to having an imaginary friend, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I mean, I, Bunker, fun. Bunker's got to give you points there. Yeah. Well, and I don't like, I, I don't feel like that's such a big thing anymore that kids have like imaginary friends and stuff. Right, like they just that, play video so. games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just play. They just Who play needs imaginary games. friends when you can be Iron Man in Fortnite? Excellent point. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've yet um, to have an uh, answer for any of my children that have asked that. <laughs> in slot number nine for the wiki, they have a matter of manners. Wow, okay. I thought the wiki would be higher on Matter of Manners, but... Hmm. I mean, they're way higher than I am. That's that's fair. Not hard. Not hard <laughs> that was my number 18, are. and they put it as number 9. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, all right. So, uh, then, coming in as my number 8, we have the Telltale Cat. Ah. It's finally solid. come up. It's fun. I don't know what you want. Like it, I, I like it. It's not it's, to throw the cat in the lake. Right. That would be what I sure, want. Sure. It's it's a Manny and Harlow episode. There, it's fun. Yeah. Like it. No, it doesn't so have. It doesn't have the 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 craftsmanship of the other Mandy Harlow episode that we're going to talk about in a little while here, probably. But it it, mm-hmm. it works. It's fun. I don't know. I like it. No, no. I I feel that I. I, I receive that. I have it higher on my list than you. So there you go. Because I haven't covered it yet either. I, I noticed. Um, so for my uh, number eight slot, I have The Long Way Home. Okay. Mostly because I love Tom in this episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tom's yeah. super great and kind. And he comes up and like being the old dude, he's like, yeah, I know I'm old and lame. But, yeah. you know, I see that you're having a hard time. And let me help you out if I can. No, and, um, that's, that's yeah, a good point. I appreciate it. Yeah. Good episode. And in the number eight spot, the wiki has sticks and stones. Interesting. <laughs> really oh, high okay. on that unreleased episode. Yeah, yeah. Well, higher than both of us, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah both, of you, gonna... both you and I put that pretty close to the bottom. Yep. <laughs> wow. I think it was my bottom five, so. Yeah, it's definitely my uh, bottom four for me. Yeah. 
Oh, man. All right. Uh, then coming in at my seven, the the holy spot on, on the list, mm. I've got Bethany's Flood. Wow. You thought we were Bethany's done with Bethany, but you forgot. Bethany's Flood. I forgot. It's, it is the best version of what this kind of episode could be. It swings for Fair. the fences. It connects for me in so many moments. It is the fever dream that Chain Reaction wants to be. I think Bethany's yeah. Flood is better at doing that. I think Seven Deadly Dwarves really loses the plot. But because, exactly. because it's like we're doing a telling of a Bible story, they weave the other pieces in so well, the performances are fun. I, yeah, I'm here for Bethany's Flood. Oh, as you should be. I think <laughs> the yeah, 18th, no. the second worst, according to the wiki. And I'm like a 59%. And I'm like, no, no, no. Number seven. <laughs> no. For <This> sure. Is art. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It's like, it's honestly trying. I love it. No, no, I, I do appreciate it. And I have it. Yeah. I mean, not the highest ranked, but right. of the Bethany episodes. Yeah. But, I, but I have some affection for it. Okay. Yeah. So, and and number seven for me, I have Idle Minds. Because okay. Because I like Robot Wiz. <laughs> he's upsetting and concerning. <laughs> but I do, I like the fact that they acknowledge that Wit is, like, kind of fallible in the yeah. sense that, like, he can't just infinitely dispense wisdom for all people at all times. Mm, um, sure, sure. So it like, does make him slightly human. But only by making him a robot first. Right. So, like, right. Well, and... And that's the allegory episode. Oh, yeah. Which I counted against it. But, you know, I appreciate what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I don't I don't mind it as much. Mostly just the album artwork of Tin Man Wit. Sure. Which looks sure. like the Tin Man. Yeah. Uh, no, that's, that's fair. Permanently lodged in my brain, thanks to this yep. podcast, because I'd never heard this episode before. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. All right. Um, coming in at number seven for the wiki, we have the treasure room. Huh. I mean, okay, that makes sense that they would like it. Like <laughs> Andrew's bottom story. episode. The treasure Literally room. the worst. Couldn't be me. Literally <laughs> light it on fire, throw it in the garbage, <laughs> roll the garbage can down oh, the street. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. So coming in at number six, I have the bad guy. Okay. It that's nearly fair. cracked my top five. I couldn't quite get it to that spot, but I really like it. It's, yeah. we. No, it's a great episode. Like, it just, it, it works. I... I think mm-hmm. I think Wit is kind of awful in it, but I think all of mm-hmm. the stuff with Nick and... um. I just Nick's Nick's fun. fun. He's a joke machine. This is him yeah. like getting to get back to his roots and and be all be all jokey about you know about this guy coming in. I love like Katie Lee's line delivery when she just <laughs> when she just repeats the yeah yeah like don't don't look him in no, the yeah, eye yeah, yeah, just yeah. not along yeah. and agree and like yeah. she just mm-hmm. she kills it. Oh yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> All right. What do you have as number six? Oh, so good. So it's some number six for me. I have Sunset Bowl of Water. Boom! There or, it is. There it is. She finally makes an appearance. Um, I think that I may have robbed Sunset. I think I I put her too low on the list. Okay. Uh, I think she could be higher than than the uh, at least one of the episodes I have over her. But I really loved it. I I just think that this is Odyssey at its best when it's kind of riffing off of other media and stuff like that. And you can make those those fun um, in genre jokes that you wouldn't normally be able to in Odyssey. So, yeah, I just enjoyed it. And the fish is funny. Gives me like Klaus from uh, American Dad vibes. Um, Sure. Klaus is the German fish. Okay. (laughs) That talks. Okay. I'll take your word for it. Um, what do you have for number six, Dylan? I already said it. Oh, that's, that's right. where I have the bad guy. I, I've been going first. <laughs> yes, the bad guy. But, um, but the wiki in number the six have? has the long way home. Okay. So me and the wiki were pretty close on that one. I yeah. ended at, uh, what, seven or eight? 
Yeah, I uh, had it at like ten. So yeah, we're 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 all in in the same ballpark. Um, okay. All right. The we're top about to crack five. The top five. Coming in <laughs> at number five, we mm-hmm, have for Dylan Weaver. Career moves. Love that for you. Banger of an episode. Right. For five for me, I have the bad guy. Ah, okay, okay. Banger so we're we're, we're pretty pretty well in line there. I have I have career moves, an episode that was dropped for no discernible reason. Um and yeah, yeah I I like Nathaniel <laughs> and Bart. Bias. It's just it's 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 fun. I don't know. It it worked for no, me. No, it's so fun. I, I wholeheartedly agree. All right. Um, Wonderful. Who does the wiki have at five? Uh, did, did, you, did you want to talk about your number five pick at all? I didn't want to didn't oh, well, blow you past you. Oh, I guess we guy, just talked I about like... it. So, yeah, fair enough. Um, the wiki in their number five spot has where there's smoke. So, mm. the smoking episode okay. coming in at number five. It makes the top five. Um, that makes sense because I know they couldn't rank it too high but but they they have because andrew likes it likes it so you know it can't be too high (laughs) all right moving in my number four pick is two roads i got a twilight sonic to number four i don't know man this is this is probably a bad pick but i respect it it might be the like shows honesty it might be the worst twilight (laughs) sound Oh, I do agree. You're definitely right. It probably is the worst. It's probably Twilight the zone. worst Twilight Zone, but it's the but season it's miles of better. It's the season of not great episodes. Um, and yeah. I've got a soft spot for Twilight Zone. No, rightfully so. <laughs> and I, like I love the ambition grand. of being like, we've got an eleven episode. We've got an eleven minute episode. What if we crammed two stories with two different cra- casts <laughs> into oh eleven gosh. minutes? Like, is a great idea. No flaws. No I also, problems. it's the only one of the split episodes that's a kids' radio, which seems like such a missed opportunity. Yeah, exactly. That's an interesting point I hadn't considered. the The fact that there is no like short half episode BTV. Yeah. Like, what? Right. Why? Or, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. They just they didn't. Kyds. They didn't touch that. All right, Andrew. What do you have as number four? Number four coming in for me, I have Matter of Manners because I thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, that the kids oh are this is about <laughs> this is the one that hurts me. This oh, yeah, is the no. one that hurts me. Oh, well, buddy! I figured, I figured Treasure Room might hurt you a bit because <laughs> oh. you 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 sounded so positive about it. But oh, Matter of man. Manners, you know. It just hits close to me because I spend so much of my life trying to keep kids uh, behaving well and using their manners. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I enjoyed oh, it. I like that it focused on the kids. That's so crazy. Oh, my word. It heavily word. featured the kids. They turned into little, like, little manner uh, Nazis, and I think that's fun. <laughs> to recap for the Chalk Squad, that was my number 18. <laughs> yep. It couldn't be uh it could be one lower it could be one lower <laughs> oh man all right all right um the wiki in their number four slot has for some reason <laughs> the eternal birthday i'm not shocked by that in the why of it because what? i think the chocomaca the ice cream is iconic in odyssey I I feel like that's just like one of those eye slap floor, <sighs> floor type bits that just. Are you talking on. about Chaka Mocha chocolate fudge cake with chocolate chocolate chunk ice cream? That's it, nail on the head. I mean, that joke is the only. It's the only thing I like about that episode. Yeah, no, it's the only good thing. But I I genuinely think <sighs> that the community is so starved for humor and does not appreciate bleeps, my guy, in the way that all same consumers of humor do and that's uh, not even from they... that episode no no <laughs> <laughs> but bethany's imaginary friend uh, is where is where yeah, is it <laughs> way way down bethany's imaginary friend is number 16 and Justice the eternal for birth leaves <laughs> oh man all right we're in the top three 
It sounds Top like it sounds three. like there's going to be some overlap, but will either of us line up on any of them? This this is so. this is the moment of truth. There has not been a single one that I have agreed with and that either Andrew or I have agreed with each other or the wiki. Yeah. And we've got a couple episodes to go. Oh, I know. I think that there's one that I agreed with the wiki on. Nope. No? I I've been close. keeping track. Th- th- we've had a couple okay. that have been off by one, um, but none oh, okay, where okay, the okay. wiki agrees. So my sense. number three is where there's smoke. I respect that. My number three is Telltale Cat. <laughs> I Throw love that. the cat in the lake. <laughs> <laughs> So it's you were the one who was more is. bothered by the throwing the cat in the lake, and you're still like, nah, 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 nah. And number, I, number so three. I, I, listen, art, art is meant to comfort the uncomfortable and to uh, discomfort the comfortable. Okay, all right. <laughs> I love that. Oh man. This is yeah. No, I like the Telltale Cat. I thought it was just absolutely crazy. In an unhinged yeah. way that made me love it. <laughs> sure, sure. That's that's understandable. Uh, number three for the wiki is Sunset Bowl of Water. One Respect. that has not been mentioned by either of us. Oh, no, oh, wait, I you did. You Sunset. did mention it. Never yeah. mind. Shoot. Okay, that's right. <laughs> no, I have affection for Sunset Bowl of Water. And, and that was the one that I said I feel like I... Right. I you, think that it should be unjustly. over matter of manners. Like, I think if... If we bumped it down so the bad guy was five or was uh, six, and then Matter of Manners was five, Sunset Bowl of Water at four. Like I feel like that would be okay. Yeah, yeah, but that's not what happened. Nope, no, that's not what happened. I made mistakes, and I'm having to deal with the consequences. All right, live um, on air. So Andrew, how do we want to do this with the number two? Because if we've been keeping track of each other's, that'll tell us what the number one is. So do we want to do our number one now and then talk about the number twos? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay with that. All right. Andrew, coming in as my number one episode of Split Episode Summer, Mm. I have the treasure room. I figured. (laughs) I figured. When I said it at the beginning and you lost it, I I figured that this was going to (laughs) happen. Look, man. I, I, I think God. that if we go back and listen to that episode, I think that it will come across that I initially didn't like it, and then <laughs> and I talked it up it, so should, much that I kind of tricked you lot. into it. <laughs> yeah, that you made me like it, and you know that's fine. Except for when I revisited my notes, there was nothing but animosity. <laughs> <laughs> oh man i and my number one in, no wait i gotta talk about it buddy this is my number one pick okay okay, okay, okay. it's it's so bananas it has it has dream sequences it has True. two like it has aubrey who i love it has lisa who is super fun they <laughs> It ends in such a like sweet place where Wit pulls it back and he's like he's like no like true value is from this. We get them trying to break into the room using Jared's like lock picking oh, kit. Lock we picking, get yeah. we get Eugene being flustered as they like try and get answers from him. It just works for me there is so much fun and joy in this episode i oh man i just i i I loved it like it it just it ticked all the boxes that i wanted it to tick i'm yeah no i feel (sighs) i i respect that opinion because i feel like it has a picture of mandy hang like a picture mandy drew hanging on the wall four yeah no it's adorable no, yeah, and and the fact that there are so many cast members in it, I think that like if I really liked the episode, it would make it way better because yeah. it has so like like you said, it has such a diverse or uh, range of cast as far as age and like the dynamics within Wits End compared to other split episodes where it you know rarely focuses on more yeah. than two people. Yeah. Um, okay, uh. so for my number one, Dylan, uh, drum roll please. I have. Career moves. Boom. There it Shocking is, folks. no one. <laughs> Best one ever. Listen, <sighs> give me retail Bart. 
give me Nathaniel dealing with retail bar. <laughs> it 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 spoke to my uh my previous employment in electronics businesses and such. Boy, oh, no, man. I loved it. I thought Bart was hilarious. I thought all the bits about like, oh man, you know, you kids don't know how to work and pull yourself up by the bootstraps and all the swindling, and then and then Nathaniel being like, just go get it someplace else. I've totally done that. <laughs> yeah. Cannot. Oh. I mean, I'd never heard it before. So yeah, consider unreleased. Yeah, it's yeah unreleased. Never heard it before. Split episode summer. The fact that it comes in and knocks off where there's smoke, which is the one that, like, I remember from childhood really loving. Just credit credit to Bart. Credit <laughs> credit to the to the whole team, you know. Mm-hmm. They really they they put they put it all out on the field today. Oh and, man. Uh, came home with the dub. Yeah. Um coming in at one at number one from the wiki is chain reaction. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 93 percent andrew's forcing me to bleep this when i put it out on the main feed which is work that i did not want to do but you know whatever it, it's it's worthwhile they picked chain reaction they picked chain reaction yep where did you have that i have that at 15 yeah i i, I chain reaction is i think is it number 10 no it's it's number 11 for me so it's mediocre yeah. at best yes yep <laughs> But the wiki really likes it. Ugh. Oh, man. And that means that for me, coming in at number two is Sunset Bowl of Water. I love it. There it's it just, is. it's so, it's so good. We get, we get Richard Maxwell's return reincarnated as a fish. It's just told through the fish's perspective. He's been dead the whole time, but we've got Harlow. We've got Mandy. It's, it's a romp and a half. I'm, I'm happy this episode exists and... Yeah, and it's probably the one that sticks with me most from this era, from, like, listening growing up. That makes sense. And, and yeah, that's cool. And I like that we kind of both did the same thing, where we had the one that we liked growing up at number two, and then the one that we liked the most as an adult <laughs> as number one. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so what, what was your number two, Andrew? Mine was Where There's Smoke. Anything Obviously. anything you'd like to say about, about when Where There's Smoke? Well, I'm, I mentioned it a little bit. Yeah, just the f- I love uh, Nick in this episode. Obviously, you don't want to be a bad influence and, and all of that and the jokes. And I, I like teenagers in Odyssey. We've talked about it on the show a lot. Just I think that that adolescent demographic is so rarely represented that when they get to kind of be teenagers and go into that sort of stuff, I find it interesting. Um, and as a kid, oh, mm, absolute crack. <laughs> just unfiltered meth straight into my brain uh just absolutely ate up anything that was like ooh mature <laughs> all right and then um yeah so the wiki has what do you think as their number 2 so okay. they apparently really like the room of consequence they have they really what do you love think it. as number 2 and um the eternal birthday is number 4 um, which yeah. I'm glad they at least put what do you think first. I, I agree. Mm-hmm. It's the better of the two Room of Consequence ones. I have them back um, to back in my rankings, and I have <laughs> what do you think above it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What What do you think barely crested my top ten? So, you know, it, yeah, sure. There you have it, folks. Oh, man. Yeah. They have been wrapped. They have been ranked. Yep. They will be shipped out uh, in five to ten business days yeah and uh i look forward to hearing (laughs) all of your responses yeah Hmm. and now now i know this is already our longest one of these by a margin and i'm so it's 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 a lot and we've been recording for too long but i do need to speed run through the other stats i crunched because i think it's interesting and also i did so much work um for the sports uh sports center episode of this podcast we, we need to have all the stats so 19 episodes total as we yep. talked about in the split episode era, the person who wrote the most of them is Jim Ware, who wrote six. Okay. So Jim Ware wrote 32% of split episodes. Marshall Younger and John Fornoff wrote 21% each. They each wrote four episodes. Okay. Then Kathy Buchanan and Charlie Richards each wrote two episodes, giving them 10% or 11%. 
And Lissa Halls Johnson wrote one of the split episodes. Um, so I think it's interesting. interesting. Jim Jim Ware, not like well known as an Odyssey writer, he kind of flunks out, but he wrote a lot during this era. Uh, Lisa yeah. Halls Johnson and well, Charlie like- Richards didn't write many ever, um, but that's fine. And then right, Marshall Younger, John Fornoff, Kathy Buchanan, obviously are like general writers on the show who are like well yeah. established um, both before and after this point. I think that this era of the show made me like Jim Ware. <laughs> in a lot of ways it, sure i mean we did so many of them yeah we, we i mean right you liked where there's smoke quite a bit yeah we yeah. we liked we liked uh um what was it long, long way home we liked decently yeah. you know two roads is a gym wear episode i put that one as number God four bless. so yeah. like yeah and then here's the other thing so the average rating from split episode summer of these writers yes the one who has the highest average rating is Kathy Buchanan. That makes sense. Right? Tracks. So I'm like, great. Love that. Love that. John Fornoff has the second highest average rating. How many episodes did he do? Two? He did four. Oh, he did four. Okay. Yep. So is Kathy Kathy did two. Did? John yeah. Fornoff did four, has the second highest average rating. Marshall Younger has the third highest average rating. So okay. once again, we're hitting like the people who wrote a like who continued in Odyssey. Basically, Jim mm-hmm. Ware has the fourth highest average rating. Um, Poor Lissa- guy. I mean, he's bogged down by it. Right, but those are like you know, three titans three times, of yeah. of Odyssey writing. I mean, aside yeah, yeah. from Phil Lawler and um and uh, Paul McCusker, those three probably have the most episodes to their name. I, th- I think they probably all beat out Hubler, or, or at least close. Um, so they're in, you know, they're going to be in your, yeah, most used writers. Like, yeah. So Jim Ware feels like, congrats, man, for even making the cut. Uh, Lissa Holes Johnson gets um, gets uh, fifth place there and the the worst writer during this era according to the wiki is charlie richards um who Poor to guy. recap wrote idle minds and the lion tail well he deserves it <laughs> i mean you liked idle minds more than anyone else but literally ev- everybody else yeah but uh, it was, that was mostly on the art <laughs> yeah so uh so that's that's all folks that's that's the end of this episode of candid commentaries uh if you liked what we did this episode great we're probably never doing it again um but <laughs> I, I i shouldn't say that i mean you know there there could be there could be fun to be mined from from ranking episodes in the future but um yeah that took a lot out of me um if you're listening stay tuned for my uh, odyssey spinoff podcast that entirely focuses around statistics gathered from the wiki <laughs> i think that that that's a market that has not been explored yet. uh-huh uh-huh great um the uh the other thing yeah i want to say here just once again thanks to you who pay us for these episodes um and to those of you who will be listening to this i believe thanksgiving week who have not paid um yeah, you're, you're welcome. You get a super long bonus of something different um, that we just, you know, thought we'd spread the wealth a little bit this month. Um, so thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, and we'll see you next week. Um, well, we'll see some of you in a few weeks with another bonus episode. And we'll see some of you next week with a guest episode. So much is happening. Uh, Fall's a busy time. I got to get out of here. Andrew, say goodbye. Bye. All right. And then we got to do the we got to do the bit where I stole and, and press stop now. <laughs>